Thank you for this day, a day in which we celebrate that the tomb was empty at the end of a week that changed everything forever. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to save us. Thank you for loving us just the way we are. Father, help us to slow down today and every day to absorb how much you love us and help us to grow closer in our relationship with you. Now, Father, let us enter into worship. We come to praise you, to thank you, and to love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, all the earth will sing your praises, with the possible exception being us. So, Lord, fill this, your house of worship, with praise. Lord, help us to set aside all distractions. Lord, send a special blessing of your Holy Spirit into this place, into our own homes, into our hearts. Help us to know you better than ever before because, Father, the more we know you and you are love, the more we love you and the more we surrender our lives to you and learn how to love each other. So, Lord, we give you permission to do a miraculous work in each of us today. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. 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 He is risen. Happy Easter. Let's greet one another on this glorious day. so awesome to see everyone here uh, our third worship service now next week we're back to one um, but uh, if uh, God keeps sending as many people as he is we may be going to two here in the near future but that's all up to him uh, today is Easter and we're going to celebrate uh, like never before so Jason uh, come on up and uh, share our announcements with us good morning again it's great to see you Great to see everybody here. If you're a guest or first time visitor with us, we're so happy you're here and we thank God that you're here with us. The announcements today, uh, next Saturday, April 23rd, is the youth group going to feed my starving children. Uh, that's in around, I don't know, around noontime. Then they're gonna go to Borrow's Pizza right afterwards, if you wanna do that. We have about 10 spots or so still available. So any adults or any youth and their friends still wanna join, uh, there's time to sign up. And spots available. Jason, I think that's Saturday, not Sunday. Okay, Saturday. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday noon. Yep, yep. The notes say Saturday, so if I misspoke. <laughs> Saturday, April 23rd is Feed My Starving Children with the youth group. Uh, April 28th will be our kindergarten open house yes. at 5.30. Come and show your support for the new academy kindergarten that we're starting. May 1st will be a special collection for the Dream Center. If you look in your handout today on one of the pages, it has more information on that special collection for May 1st, and then Matthew's Crossing will resume the month after that. May 14th will be a regular Feed My Starving Children packing session. You can sign up in the white insert on the bulletin. Camp Aloma with Pastor Mo is scheduled this summer for June 5th through June 10th. That's for rising third through ninth graders uh, and their friends. So it's a great time to get up to uh, the Prescott area. VBS has been scheduled here at Light of Christ. That's going to be July 11th through July 15th this year. You can also sign up to volunteer or be involved with that in the white insert in your bulletin today. Uh, we do have some flowers up here, which are great and we're very thankful for. Uh, just a reminder, if you did bring one of these, you're welcome to take it home today after service. Uh, as usual, you can see your bulletin under the weekly reminders section for all the different ways to be involved with Bible studies, uh, whether it's in person here at the church, uh, in person at someone's residence or some other location, or the ones that we offer on our Facebook uh, pages throughout the week. Is there an announcement? That, no? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, if you will, please do. sign the attendance books that are over on this side and pass them over this way. And then, as always, we do have nursery services available and the family active children cry room available as well today uh, in the back if you need that. And with that, I think we're good. If you're able to stand with me and say the prayer of confession, we'll go into that. Lord Jesus Christ, I am sorry for the things I've done wrong. I want to be completely honest with you. I ask your forgiveness for those things which are on my heart this morning. Let's continue. Please forgive me. 
I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please fill my life with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now let's sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. to invite Karen to come forward. She's got an announcement and we're going to play a little video of um, the uh, Vacation Bible School. It's going to be starting here in a little bit and uh, Karen's helping us go to a whole new level with registration. So let's give her the gift of encouragement. And let me get the mic for you. There you are. Thanks. Good morning. Over 50 years ago, a very poor woman um, loaded a bunch of up a bunch of neighborhood kids into her feeder station wagon and took us all to vacation Bible school where I personally met Jesus um, as my Lord and Savior. And this year, we have the opportunity to um, bring a whole new generation of kids to Jesus yes. and introduce them to, the, to Jesus. And um, coming up on um, July 11th through 15th for ages four through fourth grade, and it's gonna be from 9 a.m. to noon and we would love to have your help. There's many different areas where you can help um, and lots of gifts and there are um, areas where you might not be a kid person, but um, there's just, you have gifts and talents that we could definitely use. So please check out the website and all the information is there. And now we're gonna show a video. Okay, excellent. excellent. Thank you, Karen.
Outstanding. Excellent. Yeah, let's thank God for this ministry. And, uh, you know, I mean, Jesus says, pay attention to the children, right? He says, actually, unless we become like children, he didn't say childish, childlike, we will never see nor enter the kingdom of heaven. So children get it. They know Jesus very well. And so start praying about who to invite in your community. So many families have come to faith uh, through their children. So it's going to be a great, great year. Thank you, Karen, for the announcement. Okay, uh, boys and girls, let's have you come on up for our time together before you head off to Sunday school. And this is for everyone, uh, fourth grade and younger. Come on up. And if you have offerings, you can put it here in the basket. And that goes to feed families here in the valley. If you don't have an offering, that's fine. That is fine. <laughs> Very good. Good to see everyone. Oops, sorry. Okay. Any other boys and girls want to come up? Okay. All right. Okay, so here's um, the uh, prayer. And every Sunday, Miss Stephanie finds a prayer from a child to uh, start us off with the children's message. Dear God, please put another holiday between Christmas and Easter. There's nothing good in there now, right? From Ginny. We could sure use another, thank you, sweetie. Uh, we could sure use another holiday. Well, you know what? Um, actually, there is something that was huge that happened between Christmas, thanks, sweetie, and Easter. And that was Good Friday. Good Friday, okay? And that's when Jesus went to the cross. Now, why did Jesus die on the cross? Yeah, to, to forgive us from all our sins. How many of you ever get in trouble at your house? Yeah, yeah. One of the little guys, oh yeah, yeah, that would be me here, right? Because none of us is perfect. We all make mistakes and, you know, our, our parents are there to kind of help us learn from those things. There were no consequences, right? We never learned. And so the same is true in our relation with God. God loves all of us, but when we sin, that's when we're going against what God wants. He wants us to love everyone, and sometimes we can be kind of mean to each other, right? He wants us to honor our parents. Sometimes we don't really listen to them like we should and disobey. And so all of that sin, all those mistakes that piles up, and guess what? That's why Jesus died. He paid for all of it. So we don't have to, okay? So we get to live with him forever in heaven because of Jesus. Right? And so he died on Friday, Good Friday, and then Saturday was a Sabbath, no one could do anything. And then Sunday is where we start today, and the ladies, they went to the tomb because they thought they were going to get his body ready for final burial because they had seen Jesus die, right? And so this is what it says in Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, so early morning on Sunday, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And guess what? An angel from heaven came down. There was like an earthquake. The angel, just by the power of God in that angel, rolled back that stone all by himself. I don't even know if he had to touch it. Maybe he just looked at it and rolled it away. He sat on it. And guess what? There were two guards, right? Big, strong men. They fainted. They passed out. Yeah, because this angel was so awesome. I don't know about you. I'm looking forward to seeing angels when we get to heaven. Parents get mad sometimes, yeah. No, they do, yeah. Angel's your name? Well, there you go. We've got an angel right here. <laughs> so, yeah, so this angel right from heaven was there and he said to the ladies, Jesus is not here. Now, he didn't roll the stone away for, them, for Jesus to come out. Jesus was already out. He rolled the stone away for them to look in and see and Jesus wasn't there. All that was there were these linen clothes, these the cloths, these really expensive things that they would wrap the body in. And if someone had been there to rob something, that's what they would have taken, but that was left. But Jesus was gone. And so the angel said, go, to, go tell his disciples, he's gonna meet all of you in Galilee. And the women were so excited, but they were kind of afraid too. And so they, they run and guess what? Jesus meets them, he's alive. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And so Mary, look at her face. Isn't that a great painting? I'll bet that's what she looked like, just amazed. She thought Jesus was dead, that they'd never see him again. And here he is alive, right? Because he took all of that sin, but God's love is so much greater. 
and he's alive and he's living today and he's with us, right? Jesus is with us. He, he's in heaven with the Father, but he also lives in our hearts and he helps us. He's our best friend, okay? Doubting Thomas, one of his disciples, wasn't there when Jesus showed up and he's like, I'm not even gonna believe it unless I show, you can show me the wounds in his hands from the, right, from being nailed to the cross and the wound in his side, I'll never believe it. So Jesus showed up and he said, Thomas, come, place your hand here. Do not doubt, believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He was so amazed Jesus is alive, right? And that's what Easter's about, that Jesus is alive. He overcame sin, death, all of it, okay? And now he's our best friend. He's our very best friend. Did you know that Jesus is with you when you're sleeping? Yeah, Do you, does Jesus sleep or does he watch over you? He watches over you, that's right. Is Jesus with you when you go to school? Yeah, yeah. is Jesus with you when you're in the car? Yeah. Is Jesus with you when your parents ask you to do something and he's helping you to obey them? Yeah. You think, you think the dots in the air are Jesus watching over you? It could be. I mean, I don't know. So I've got another picture over here. You know who this is? Of course you don't know who this is. This, this is Miss Anna. Everybody say Anna. So Miss Anna is a resident at one of the nursing homes because every week we, we go to two different nursing homes and bring a worship service there because these people, they love Jesus, but they can't come to church like we can, right? We can come every week. They would love to come, but they can't because they're not physically able to. And so we take a worship service there. Well, guess what? This past Wednesday, uh, Mr. Jamie was there and Anna came in real late. She had a hard time getting up. She didn't really want to be there. She came in and she was kind of angry, but guess what? Jesus had a surprise for her and she was given that necklace. You see the necklace? You see the necklace around here? That was actually made by our preschoolers here in our preschool. So these little boys and girls made the necklaces and then we got to hand them to those beautiful people there, right? And you know what happened with Anna? She smiled. And she all of a sudden was happy. She actually started laughing. They said they'd never heard Anna laugh before. Okay? So this is what Jesus does. He loved everyone when he was alive and walking right around. He loved everyone, spent time with them. And now that he's living in us, because he's alive, he's living in us. And he's loving, loving people through us too. Isn't that awesome? And like Miss Anna, she always encourages us. To keep our faith in Jesus. See how it just keeps going round and round. So we bring you boys and girls to church or to preschool. You do some really neat things. Make some crafts for those folks. And then they, their love through that. And then they love us and it just keeps going and going. And it's all Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Because Jesus is not dead. He is alive. And he's living in us. And he's going to love everyone through us. Okay? All right. Before you head off to Sunday school, let's go ahead and fold our hands. Close our eyes. Bow our heads. And say this prayer. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me. I love you too. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job, boys and girls. All right, you can head off to Sunday school. You can go back and sit with your folks, whatever you would like. We'll see you after worship. Now's the time in the service uh, where we take the offering. Here at Light of Christ, we have several ways that you can make the offering. We have the basket in the back of the sanctuary. You can give online through our website. You can mail it or drop it off in the box by the parking lot. As always, a decision to make an offering is between you and God. And if you are a guest here today, we're just thankful and thankful to God that you're here with us today. With that, would you pray with me for the offering? Heavenly Father, we are humbled by all the gifts and love and blessings that we have. Help us, Father, to never take those for granted, because we know it is only because of you that we are so fortunate. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity today to give back. We pray that this offering will be used to honor and glorify you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh. 
today. Let's all stand. The Resurrection. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. 
He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Thank you, Jeff. Let's pray. Father, open up our hearts and minds and souls to the work of your Holy Spirit right now. Father, help us to be fully present, to set aside all distractions, to just be still in your house, know that you love us, that you know us perfectly, and that we are not here by accident, that you have brought us here. So, Father, speak to us. Get me completely out of the way. No one needs to hear from me. We all need to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Now just imagine what that must have been like for his disciples, for the women who went to the tomb on that first Sunday after the death of our Lord. And as I said, looking to give this final gift of love, the final thing that they could do for Jesus who had done everything for them, everything. It's not hard to understand how they never believed he could die because, I mean, he brought Lazarus back from the dead, four days dead. He, he's the Lord of life. How could he ever die? Oh, but he had to die. He had to die for us out of love. And no one made him do it. He chose this. Before time began, I believe that when God created us with free will, the same moment was the cross. The same moment. Because we're by nature sinful and unclean. All that means is we're selfish. We're self-centered. We're easily afraid. I don't know about you, but I was kind of obstinate when I was a child. Anybody else out there? Hmm? Don't touch that stove. There's just something in us. It's like, you're not going to tell me what to do. See, God loves us, but he hates sin. Sin is what separates us from God and from each other. Sin is why there's so much brokenness in this world. It's sin. But he didn't quit. He didn't give up. He sent his son to show us what life is meant to be. To love us all. And then to die. To take the sins. And think about that. We all know what it's like to be deep in darkness. The dark night of the soul. We all know what it's like to be afraid. We all know what it's like to, to think that we don't matter. That maybe it would just be better if we weren't even here. All that darkness. The shame. The guilt. Things that we've said that we knew it was wrong. Even though it was coming. And we knew it would hurt them. And we just didn't stop. And it's like, Lord. All that sin. So if you know that darkness. Multiply it by about 15 billion people. Or whatever the number is. That's what Jesus took into his heart, mind, and soul. So if you ever are tempted by Satan to think no one understands the darkness, uh, Jesus does. All of it. He experienced it. If anyone asks you, who do you think is the most sinful person who's ever lived? Well, that's easy. Jesus. Because he took it all. And he paid the price. And he said, it is finished. He didn't say, I did my part. He said, it is finished. And he died. And the temple curtain was torn in two. We'll get to that in a bit. And they took him down and they buried him. And now it's Sunday morning. 
Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Right? They brought the spices for the final burial, the last gift of love they could give to the one who gave them everything. And there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow, and for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. I think the conversation the angel wanted to have with the Marys, he didn't want the guards to hear. I think he just looked at him. I do. You know, that stern look. Parents, you know that look. And they're like, oh, and they were out. That's it. I can't wait to meet angels. Those guys are going to be so awesome. Every time they show up, they're like, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. And so he said, don't be afraid. Go and tell his disciples that he's alive. He didn't roll back that stone for Jesus. Jesus is already gone. He rolled it back that stone so they could look in and see he is not here. He is alive. All the sin the world, we could, all of us together could come up with didn't keep him down 48 hours. He died on Friday afternoon, Sunday morning. Where'd he go? Where's Jesus? Yeah. See, friends, love wins. It's already won. It's just most of the people in the world have no idea about that, and it's easy for us to forget, too. Love is already won. God is love. We are created in his image, which means at the core of our being, we are beings of love. It's just so corrupted by this world, by our own sin nature, selfishness. But he has not given up on us. He is here. He loves each one of us. Praise be to God. So, they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Go and tell. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. And a few verses later, the last verses in Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. I love that. But some doubted. Like, I don't know. Too good to be true? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's so good, it, it has to be true. All of your sins have already been paid in full. And that means all the sins of other people when they commit against us. I gotta teach that guy a thing or two. All right, teach him. As long as you're teaching. Teach him about God's grace. That we all make mistakes. We all have bad days, but Jesus has paid for it all. It's forgiven, and we forgive. Yes, Lord. Some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, right? When he went to the cross, he did not, he did not, no matter how many times he tried to tell his disciples, they didn't get it. He, they thought he was going to Jerusalem to defeat defeat Pontius Pilate and the Romans and establish an earthly kingdom. And no matter how many times he told them, I'm going there to die, I'm going there to die, I'm going there to die, they're like, nah. I think he's overworked, he's confused. No. You're not going to die. And we're going to be in your administration. All right. He didn't go to Jerusalem to defeat Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He went to Jerusalem to defeat sin, death, and the devil. And that's what he did. That's what he did. Praise be to God. Because I don't know about you, there's not even one thought that I've had that's pure enough to get me into heaven. It's either grace or we're all in trouble. Praise be to God, it is grace. Grace upon grace. And when we allow the grace of God to fill us and set us free from our own sin, then we just pour that out to other people. And let me tell you, friends, there is so much condemnation in this world that a child of God who is following Jesus Christ filled with grace and hope and love is like a beacon in the night. Yeah, it's Jesus. It's his love. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. You see that? Make disciples. It's not, a, you know, it's not like throwing dice. We know, they knew how to make disciples. It's a process. And he was talking to people that he knew were going to die for him. He knew it. 
They were sold out followers. And so when he said, go and make disciples, they know exactly what he's talking about. Everybody talks about discipleship. But whose disciples are they making? Sometimes it seems to be they're making disciples of a pastor. Now, we're supposed to be and make disciples of Jesus Christ and him alone. He is the only one worthy of praise. He is the only one worthy of glory. Yes, Lord. Go, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. See that? To observe all that I have commanded you. Aren't you glad that he didn't say, teach them to observe, to observe everything the Old Testament says? Aren't you glad about that? I know I am. Oh my goodness, there were over 600 different laws in the Old Testament. What? And there's a lot in the Old Testament that I don't get. I don't know about you. Like, I don't understand Samson. To this day, I don't understand Samson. He called, he called his fiancée a heifer. <laughs> it didn't work out. Let's just put it that way. It did not work out. Even at the end of his life, right, mighty Samson pushing the pillars and the temple falls and kills a thousand Philistines, even at the end, he doesn't say, May this bring glory to God, the death of these heathens. You know his reason for killing them all? Revenge for his eyes. Revenge. So honestly, anybody, see me after, tell me what it means. I don't get it. I think it's mostly a cautionary tale saying, you better learn to control your anger or else. Yes, Lord. Because man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires for every one of us. Yeah. It's not anger. It's grace. It's forgiveness. It's patience. It's prayer. It's Jesus. See, we're mind, body, and soul. The world talks about mind and body all the time. The world knows nothing about our souls. But here's the thing. The soul is who we truly are. We are here for a blink of an eye. Our bodies Waste away a little bit. How many are experiencing your body wasting away a little bit? Oh my goodness. Just standing here, my back started hurting. I'm like, what, Lord, really? But our spirits can be renewed day by day. We just need to learn how to, figure, how to do that. And God has shown us how to do that through his first disciples. And by the grace of God, we have learned how to make disciples here at Light of Christ. We have like 45 guys in weekly Bible study groups. You explain it. You explain it. Weekly Bible study groups. These men are becoming mighty men of God and their entire family is changing as a result. You explain it. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. See, here's the thing. It's just it's not about Jesus Right, coming out of the tomb and getting us into heaven. That's not, I mean, that, praise God for that, right? That when we die, we're, our home is in heaven. Jesus was not in the tomb on Easter morning, and now he brings us out of our own tombs of selfishness and fear and unbelief to become the people he created us to be. Children of light in this world right now. Right now. And most people have no clue that's even possible. Well, yeah, it is. But it's about surrender. It's not about striving. It's about surrender. I surrender all to you, Lord Jesus. I'm just done. I'm, just, I'm done trying to prove myself. I'm done trying to separate myself from the crowd. I don't want to be separate from the crowd. I want to learn how to love people in the crowd. Amen? I want to learn how to love the broken and hurting in nursing homes that no one else has the time of day for, but Jesus hasn't forgotten them. You know, there's a story of Martha and Mary in the Bible, and uh, it's Luke 10, 38 through 42. And I used to just fly right by it, like, yeah, whatever, it's, there's nothing there for me. So Martha is having Jesus and his disciples over for a meal. And so she is busy, right, with much serving. 
And I can just see her like coming out with a potato salad from the kitchen, putting it on the table and goes back in and right comes out with a lemonade and maybe some treats for the kid. I don't know where the kids. I don't know, whatever. And then she notices her sister who is sitting there at Jesus feet, listening to him. And she starts getting a little upset to the point where I love this. She goes to Jesus and says this, Lord, do you not care? <laughs> Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Have you ever had such a bad day where you're actually accusing Jesus of not caring? Lord, am I the only one here that does anything around this house? Can you please send somebody else who's going to work? Because, right, that self-pity party. Have you noticed you don't even need a group for a self-pity party? That can be a one-person party. Do you not care that my sister has left me to work alone? Tell her then to help me. She is so angry, she's telling Jesus what he needs to do. Anybody else been there? Wow. I love Martha. I love Martha. And you know, it would make sense if Jesus said, you know, Mary, your sister's probably right. There's a lot of us. So, you know, why don't you go help her? And Matthew, he does a good job, you know, taking notes. You can get the notes later. She could have, he could have said that, but of course he doesn't. This is what Jesus says. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. Only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen what is best and it will not be taken from her. And I think we're all involved in a lot of good things. Serving, right? Working, raising our families. Those are all really good things. But the only necessary thing is learning to be still and listen to Jesus. Be still. See, for the longest time, I thought Mary was doing nothing. She's like, Martha's right. Martha's right. I think Mary is doing the hardest thing there is to quiet down and listen to Jesus. And what's he going to say? He's going to say whatever you need to hear. He'll probably tell you that he loves you exactly as you are and you got nothing to prove to anybody, including yourself. Just let him love you. If you've said something that hurt someone and you've been making excuses for it, he's probably going to say, you know what, you need to apologize. I want that relationship reconciled. You do your part. There's no guarantee the other person is going to but I want you to do your part. And I'll give you peace. Maybe you're facing the toughest time in your life. Jesus isn't afraid of it. You will do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We just need to listen. Yes, Lord. Do you see why Satan wants us to be busy? <laughs> too busy for church? Too busy for Bible study? Just too busy? Yeah. Come on. It's not rocket science. So two men in the Bible who were completely transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, Saul and uh, Peter. Saul, this is a bad dude. He was hunting Christians. He was there at the first martyr when, when Stephen was killed. Stephen said, you always resist the Holy Spirit as they're killing him. And then he also said, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And the Bible says he fell asleep. He didn't die. He just fell asleep. As followers of Jesus, we never die. We just fall asleep. We would fall asleep here. We wake up there. Praise be to God. And Saul was there watching it. And then Jesus dealt with him, took his eyesight for three days. He said, you're such a big man. What about now? You went from one of the most powerful people in the country to a beggar like that. It's time for you to think about your life a little bit. And that's why those things that humble us, God can turn it into a life transformation if we let him. Say, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to go this direction. I want, I want Jesus to lead me. Yes, Lord. And here's what... Paul wrote, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. For that, but for that very reason, I've shown, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Yeah, he went from someone who hated Jesus and the church to one of the greatest encouragers ever. And God doesn't play favorites. So if he can do it in one of us, he can do it in all of us. It's just a matter of, will we surrender? Will we let him do what he wants to do?
Thomas Merton put it this way, if you find God with ease, perhaps it is not God you have found. I think we all are on this journey and we try to do everything on our own or we look to other experts and it seems like the last one that we reach out to is God. But he is so patient. He's okay with that. He's not upset. He's like, I've never left you and I never will. Are you ready? Yes, Lord. Peter, follower of Jesus, made mistake after mistake. I will never deny you. Um, actually, Peter, tonight before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Not me, not me, Lord. All right. You know, at the end of his life, you know how he died? He died by crucifixion. But he asked that he would be crucified upside down because he did not deserve the honor of dying the way his Lord and Savior had died. You want to talk about a transformed, totally transformed life? Yeah. And this is what God wants to do in each of us. And look at what Peter writes here. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. He's like, Jesus is going to change your heart. The Holy Spirit will change your heart. And then you're just going to shine. And you're going to be a person of light and, and joy and hope. And people will sense that in you. And they're going to say, what is going on with you? And he said, be ready. But be gentle and respectful. Everyone has their own journey. They have their own struggles. God will give you the words. And you young people in high school, junior high, there are a lot of kids around you that are really struggling. Ask Jesus to fill your heart with his love, and he's going to lead you to these kids every, every day. And, and you're going to love them. And he's going to love them through you. They're going to know at least one person here who thinks I matter. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They always have. Humble yourselves, therefore, Peter writes, under the mighty hand of God, humble yourselves. So the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And uh, here in James, religion that our father accepts as pure and faultless is this. It's like if we have to talk about religion, it's all about relationship. But if we have to talk about religion, here's what to look for. People who care for widows and orphans in their distress. Why widows and orphans? Because they're so vulnerable and they can't do anything for us. If we're actually loving them, that has to be Jesus in us. Amen? That has to be Jesus in us. It has to be Jesus. He hasn't forgotten them. And when we let him get us out of our own way, that leaves a lot of time to love God and love everybody else. Only Jesus can do that. See, and now the baton is passed to us as men and women who have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ. We are compelled by the Holy Spirit to share what God has done in us. And here from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Go and tell. So it's our turn. So I asked this young man who has been here for about two months to come up here and share a little bit of what God is doing in him. And so let's give Nick the gift of encouragement as he comes forward. Nick, come on up, young man. Jason, you have the microphone. Jason, can we get the microphone for Nick? Thank you, brother. Come on up. Greetings. Can you hear me okay? Is that nice and get it close to Closer. Oh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> I asked for the Tony Robbins mic like he has. But <laughs> Tony <go>. Robbins mic. <laughs> uh, so I stand before you today, honestly humbled at the ability or the, having the opportunity to speak with you guys. Uh, obviously, I haven't been here for very long, but um, I guess Pastor Mo wants me to go right to the majors. I feel like I just picked up the bat, and now we're in the major league. So here we go. Fear not, right? It all started when my brother asked me to be the best man at his wedding, and I started writing the speech. And it didn't take long for me to figure out that I didn't know much about love or relationships or life. And this kind of led me to reevaluate everything about my life. Uh, before too long, uh, I realized that the, the thing that was missing most uh, was relationships. I tried a bunch of th different things. I made a few changes and I just feel, felt like there was like some emptiness inside me that I could not fill. Um, so I went to relationships, right? And I started trying to figure out which relationship I would fix first. Uh, who, would I, who would I talk to first? How would I fix a relationship? Where would I start? And 
I didn't really understand at the time, but I kind of like just settled on my relationship with Jesus. So I started looking for churches, and I had gone to church my whole life growing up. Traditional, modern, secular, non-denominational. I was in the choir when I was in boot camp. Uh, then all kinds of different stuff as far as going to church and worshiping and being Christian and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, nothing gave me what I was looking for. So I said, I'm just going to try a couple different places. I'll go for three weeks. If I don't like it, so be it. I'll just move on. Um, just got on Google and found a random church, and that was Light of Christ. Uh, during the first sermon, it felt like Mo was talking directly to me. Uh, it's Corinthians, and um, obviously we're talking about some love. And at the time, I thought to myself, oh, cool, you know, thanks, God. You brought me here so I could get some quotes for my speech at my brother's wedding, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, and then after church, I shook hands with Mo and got to meet him, and he said, whatever's troubling you, we'd love to help you heal. And if I'm being completely honest, I walked away thinking, what is this guy selling? <laughs> the cynic in me told me that he was just trying to get me to join the church so I could donate to the build fund, just like all the other places I've been to in the past. Right? But he wasn't. We talked the following week, and I shared my religious journey so far, and he encouraged me to read the two most popular books ever written. <laughs> Pure Power, which is written. <laughs> That's his book. <laughs> and The Believer's Instructions Before Leaving Earth. For the next week or so, they were both paperweights. And then I heard a poem, and it's called The Man in the Glass. And... For those of you who haven't heard it, The Man in the Glass is a poem, uh, basically it says at the end of your life, when you look back in the mirror, are you going to be satisfied with the person that's looking back at you? So that kind of led me to read Mo's book, and I was kind of going through it, and then a couple weeks later, Mo's sermon happened to be about being the man that God created you to be. So he was again talking to me, but this time I cracked. Uh, during the sermon, for the first time in a long time, I became emotional. But this time it wasn't for fear or sorrow or sadness. That day I cried uh, tears of unadulterated, pure joy and simple relief more than anything. I felt a burden that I had placed on myself. Um, all the sin I had done, all the inadequacies I felt had finally been lifted off my shoulders. I finally comprehended that Jesus had died uh, for my sins and that my slate was finally clean. That giving my life to Jesus would help me forgive myself and repairing my relationship with him would help me rep repair relationships in my life with others. While I felt renewed and ready to start my life with Jesus, I still had hesitations. I'm not sure why, but after church, Mo said, hey, come to Bible study this week on Tuesday. And I said, Bible study? That's not for me, man. He didn't, I didn't say that, but that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm like, Bible study? Right? So after a few days, I thought about it a little bit more and... I said, I'm just going to go. I've been doing all kinds of crazy things, trying to fill the hole in my heart, and nothing's worked. So what do I have to lose? Uh, the first Bible study was really intimidating. Uh, some of these guys in there are like biblical scholars. They were talking about Jesus and disciples like I would talk about NFL football. <laughs> but as we worked through each verse and uh, we talked about our individual interpretations of the word, things became clearer. Soon is apparent that we were all learning together, no matter how experienced we each were. And there are lessons in every single chapter, book, word, syllable of the word that we could all learn from. So over the, uh, the past few months, of coming to light of Christ and uh, for worship and Bible study, things have really actually kind of changed for me. At first, it was actually sort of a violent transition. There were times when I actually felt like uh, Jesus and the devil were fighting over me like a, two dogs would fight over a chew toy. Uh, but thankfully, with the help of you all and the men in the Bible study group and Mo, Jesus won. 
since opening up and making them a larger part of my life, I found that things kind of sort in place uh, the way they should. Not always, but often. I'm slower to anger, not quite as quick to judge, uh, and it's a work in progress, but my heart is fuller than it's ever been with his love. I have a long road ahead of me, we all do, but even in the darkest of night, he will lead me along the proper path, teaching me the lessons I need to become a better person and glorify him. I tried so long to do things on my own, and it really didn't work. The stubborn part of me would not accept that I needed his help and his guidance. We all do, right? Attending church is no longer about, for me, showing up to punch a clock or check a box. Bible study is no longer an obligation or inconvenience. Both are part of God's way of keeping me on the right track and reminding me that I'm not the only one who needs his guidance. Uh, he, this, both things keep the fire inside of me alive for him. Uh, if you're new here today, I'd like you to, to take this opportunity to invite you to make Jesus a bigger part of your life. Start small if you need to. Read the word. Daily is great. Take five minutes a day to pray about something in your life that you're struggling with. The more you learn about what is possible with Christ, the bigger the fire inside you will grow. Don't just ask for things. You should give them as well. Any relationship is a two-way street. I've learned that so far. Above all, listen. Listen to what God is trying to tell you. Listen to the lesson he teaches and apply them to your life. Let him guide you along the right path and give you the manner that's give, excuse me, give back to him in the manner that he's given to you. Forgive yourself as he forgave you. Jesus died for our sins so you could be set free from that burden those sins create. Embrace the freedom. Use the gifts that he gave you to help others. Glorify him when you succeed. And follow his path and live his words so you too can love the man in the glass. Wow. We're just seeing life after life after life after life. Total transformation. And so, how Jesus, real quick, how does Jesus transform lives from darkness to light? Number one, there has to be a holy hunger rising up within your soul. Where you're just done. You're just done with what the world has to offer and you want more. You want what God has for you. You want to discover how important you are to him and how much he loves you and, and, and how he can use you to just love and love and love so many people. I mean, you don't even, yeah, none of us has a clue what God's plan is for us, but it's the adventure we're created to live. Number two, we call out to God for help. I mean, I, I appreciate people and experts and all that, but I just want to hear from the throne of heaven. I want to hear from my heavenly father. Number three, the Holy Spirit brings us into a faith family of peace, hope, and love. You want to know people who you can trust? People who don't want anything from you. We don't want anything from you. You can go here for the rest of your life and never give a penny. That's fine. God just wants you as you are. And we love you. And we're all going to help each other stay on track with Jesus. Number four, when you're ready, the Spirit will encourage you to take the next step. I don't know what that next step is. I don't know if that next step is for me. It could be coming to worship. It could be joining a Bible study. It could be reading, like Nick said, five minutes a day. Whatever it is, just take that next step. And here's the last point. There's always a next step. Always. The adventure never ends. The Bible says old men will dream dreams. Now, I'm not old, but if I were, I would still be dreaming dreams. Amen. His dreams every day. As long as we have breath in our body, God has ministry for us. People that we get to love. He wants to love us to life every day. Shine your light. We close with this. Matthew 27, when Jesus was on the cross, he cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Why was the curtain so significant? Because the curtain separated the holiest of holies, a holy God and his residence on earth from all the sinful people. And only one person got to go behind that curtain one day a year to spend time with God. So when Jesus died, paying the price for all 
of our sins. That curtain, the actual verb is rent asunder. It was destroyed. The way is wide open to your Heavenly Father, brothers and sisters. Let's all walk to him together and stay there. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus and what he has accomplished for us all. The death of striving, of having to prove ourselves, of just being loved exactly as we are. And whatever change is to be made in our lives, you'll bring that. But it'll be gentle. It'll be day by day. And it'll be walking out of darkness into light and freedom and more love and more passion and compassion for others than we have ever had ever in our lives. Because it's going to be you. And so, Lord, before we leave this place, we want to take time and thank you for dying for us. Lord, show us how to live for you how to live for you and with you every day, every instant for the rest of our lives. We love you forever, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing Lord's Prayer. Yeah.
Thank you.